What's the Rick Owens one? I don't know who Rick Owens is. But it does say it's filled with wonderful objects, which which bodes well. Let me go to the bathroom first, though. Give me one sec. I All was right, Rick. working with a dealer in New York who would send me images of sarcophaguses that were up for auction. Very creepy. Love to hear that. Love to hear that. That's the old household sarcophagus. This is so avant-garde. What was that? It's called Kneeling Youth, and it's a study, I believe, for a fountain that's but what, encircled why? by these youths leaning over it. It's about introversion, introspection, narcissism. Well, this is my interpretation. I just This is one of the most pretentious things I've ever heard in my life. Is the whole house tour like this? That, that it creates. It's kind of severe and a little bit maudlin, a little bit melancholy, but also vaguely spiritual. When I am in... It's a statue of a tiny wiener guy. My man, you are looking too deep into it. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it. You're, you're, going, you're going a little too far. You're flying close to the sun. Cool. And he used army blankets as a symbol of protection and insulation and isolation. The army surplus what? was where I would get my original fabrics. I would make clothes. Every place I have, I cover with army blankets. When what I a weird tradition. Or furniture, I'm pretty much a reductivist. I don't think about domestic details that much. They feel a little fussy to me. So the domesticity in this apartment is pretty <laughs> minimal. <laughs> That, that's what I was thinking. I, when, when we were taking a brief tour, that's what popped into my head. I didn't think that you uh, Philistines in the chat would have understood my critique if I had dropped it like that. But I also noticed immediately that there is almost no domesticity here. We're entering like this really almost serene place where you can really feel a lot of dichotomous like clashing of cultures almost. And it takes a keen eye to really pick up on the subtle vicissitudes that are present here. And I really feel like the army blankets really help ground it again. Bring it back to that nice earth chakra. So I can really kind of understand where Rick's getting at here. And this little hidden supervillain compartment, I have no doubt will have no corpses. So I'm pretty excited. Rick's really got me hooked on this one. That's my closet. I don't have Okay, very many that was clothes. underwhelming. It's a little stack of t-shirts. Like a, a coffin. Shorts for here. When I first put this place together seven years ago, I wanted Italian rationalism. I wanted <laughs> something kind of monastic, something kind of severe. I like right. the classic. I get that feeling tone, as well. The travertine interior sets. I like travertine, though, Rick. You're better than that. That's rather pedestrian, if you ask me. Why not a more exotic earth metal? Have you thought of marble, perhaps? Been impressed by the skulls in Italian churches. This mm -hmm. skull I got from a medical Who isn't, school auction after all? years ago. And I use it It's a real human skull then. Mori is a reminder good. Good, 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 that good. all is vanity. That one day my skull is going to be on somebody else's desk. So seize the day, seize the moment. Rick, what world do you think we're living in? My man, uh... No one's gonna no one's gonna be putting your skull on their desk. This isn't Mad Max. Like we're not gonna be wearing your skin as a pelt when you're gone. Like it's just it's just not happening. Like having a human skull on a mantle there, like that's just not super average, I I would argue. Like you don't need to worry too much about that. Like your skull's probably gonna stay in your fifty thousand dollar travertine coffin when the time comes. If the time comes, you look like a vampire. We could be seeing you for the next 500 years. I really don't know. But you don't need to worry too much about, like, your skull being owned by somebody else. Like, it's, I just, I can say with a high level of confidence, it's not going to happen. The pistols are from my father's collection. He was a very conservative, kind of stridently moralist, who I had a... Hmm. <clears throat> difficult relationship with. We used to be horrified, mom okay. and me, about having guns around the house, but now they are an affectionate reminder of him. And I like that is the terrifying. That is that is horrifying. With the gym, the Italian futurist artist Giacomo Balla. They're very severe very familiar with Giacomo. and yet kind of fantastic at the same time. Once again, I've got to say. 
how the fuck does everyone who makes like these pretentious pieces of furniture always have like a really bougie ass name? Giacomo. Again, there's no Bobby Dipshit originals here. You know, you never have a piece by someone with just a very plain, ordinary, fucking normal name. I think they make it up. I don't know if that's like a known thing, but to me, I feel like it's a conspiracy. There's just no way that always works out to be the case. That they have a fancy name for their pretentious furniture. Lined with a cotton pele oval fabric. <laughs> it is regal and cozy on a winter morning. Uh, when my I'm favorite kind of fabric. I'm having coffee on the terrace. What was that? The goblet oblum fabric? But my favorite object is this one. So worth the wait. We call her Liza. It's not a super After cool Liza sarcophagus, though. You could have gotten a better one, like the one Emotep, Emotep was buried in for the Mummy movie. Became available a few years ago, and we entered into an agreement Holy to shit. with the family that was running it, and to turn it into an. That is such a huge blazer. This man threw this on and immediately looks like fucking Slender Man or something from our excess. his whole brand is oversized everything i i don't know any rick owens uh, designs let me take a peek real quick maybe that'll help me get uh, like a a feel for his refined palette holy shit he's selling a leather funnel uh, a leather funnel neck puffer coat for four thousand nine hundred and fifteen dollars this shit looks like what the juggernaut wears in modern warfare 2 L look at this Well, you're right. It mainly is just like oversized everything. Super smart. Legitimately super smart. Take pre-existing clothes. Set them to Wumbo. Christ, even the socks are oversized. Oh my god, the socks are $170. Pardon me? What in tarnation? Take a peek at this. That's the most expensive sock I've ever seen in my life. $300 for 90% of a glove. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, the glove is missing the, the tops on the thumb and, and pointer finger. Like the two most important fingers. Oh, now they're going to get all cold. Either go fingerless or, or go full glove. Why, why half measures? Have we learned nothing from Breaking Bad? Wow, this is crazy. Yeah, I've never seen any of these. Does anyone wear Rick Owens? Who, like, who wears this? Like, out in public, I'll see Supreme, I'll see Gucci, Balenciagas. I never have heard or seen Rick Owens anything. For several years, I have been collecting these Onagadori rooster feathers. They were bred originally in 17th Pardon? century Japan. My okay. father had a library in the basement. And I like to have them around to remind myself of unlimited possibilities. I like to start from a clean slate of a collection. That's that what you get from the rooster feathers? Have stayed here. These have been here for okay. every day. I'm very grateful that I ended up here. Arrivederci. It was nice to meet you, Rick. This was certainly interesting. I don't think I'll ever fully understand what drives someone to find so much meaning in so little, but I can't be upset about it, you know, I, I respect it. But my God, I don't think I'll ever get it. Finding unlimited possibilities from looking at rooster feathers.